everybody welcome to shift heads back to the excursion i know that uh i've been telling you that it's got a bit of a misfire and uh i've changed the spark plug as you can see it's pretty screwed up um swap the coils around and check the injector everything's working fine on that so today went and got this handy little compression tester from o'reilly's and uh we're gonna pull it apart i'm only gonna check the compression on cylinder number three because that's the problem cylinder i'm having gonna cut the fuel off on the truck so it doesn't fire up on me and cause this thing to explode and uh yeah let's get to it so first step we're gonna pop the coil off very easy to do on this one i can see that both terminals there on that connector are fine now on this <clears throat> particular engine it's got a coil on plug and the plugs are buried deep down into the cylinder head they've got these long coil boots that have a little spring inside of them that connect the coil part all the way down to here you can see that little spring right there that's what connects to the spark plug and delivers the firepower before I get any further, I want to disconnect this fuel injector and I want to check the connectors. Yeah, okay, those are connected, that's fine. That is not a good sign. So now, let's grab our handy dandy tools here to get our spark plug out. Pop that over there. I got these awesome little magnetic spark plug tools from Matco Tools. They're magnetic, so it's not that typical rubber. So when you go to put the spark plug back in, the rubber boot doesn't stick to the spark plug. Looking at the new spark plug here, seems to be okay. I'm wondering if it's not firing. It smells wet, it smells like it's not firing. Let's go ahead and open up our compression tester. I'm a little upset it doesn't come with the neat little carrying case, but I'll just find somewhere else in my toolbox to put it. Well, one of my toolboxes. Maybe one of these days I'll get into woodworking and start making tool cabinet chest holder things. Woodworking. Right. I did take wood shop in high school, but yeah, that's not going to happen. I like to take apart and put things back together that's already, you know, put together. I don't like making shit from scratch. I'm not too good at it. My dad, on the other hand, he's pretty freaking decent with that stuff. Made a lot of cool shit over the years. Okay. All right, you know what? We'll set her in there. I just want to find the thread. There we go. Start tightening it down. Let's get it to where. Let's get this hose bit out of here. I've got hose. I've got hoes. Oh, I'm sure this is so entertaining for y'all to watch. Oop, sounds like it feels like it went in there. Let's go ahead and tighten it down. Okay. Bingo. Alright, now we get the tester bit, the actual compression doodad. The gauge. Okay. Come on, get on there. There it goes. Now, I need to get to the fuse panel. <clears throat> and I need to undo the fuel pump relay. Which is way over here. I don't know if you can see me over there. But... So, I need to pull this sucker out. Come on. Play nice with me. You don't want to see me when I'm angry. There we go. Go ahead and pull that. Let's move my rock star here so it doesn't spill all over the place. Let me just get a quick... There we go. All right. Oh, oh, that's not a good sign. That is not a good sign at all. Let's go ahead and 
pop that down. That's nice and tight. That's nice and tight. Let's try that one more time. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this compression tester goes all the way up to 300, but we're looking for something somewhere around the, the 90 to 120 range. Anything less than that, and we're not looking good. So, let's take a little look here. You can hear that differentiation in the engine. That means to tell me that yes, we are dead on compression. In fact, it's leaked down right now. It's leaked all the way back down to almost nothing. So yeah, that cylinder head's gonna have to come off. Which is not what I wanted to hear because I'll show you this on the GoPro. There's a lot of stuff back there. And I mean, that thing goes all the way back there. And uh, the shop I used to work at, uh, we've been talking back and forth about what it is we're gonna do to get this cylinder head off. And there's other things that I wanna get done while we're doing it, which is replace the timing chains and tensioners and the guides on that which, I mean, you gotta pull those off to change this cylinder head out anyway. And uh, they may have to do is they may end up pulling the motor out and uh, pulling the head off from there, unless it's easier for them to pull the body off of it, which I think there's only eight bolts holding this body on. But we'll see. We'll figure out what it is that Bruce and his boys wanna do. But as for now, yeah, that's a dead cylinder. So why don't we go ahead and check the cylinder next to it. We'll go ahead and pull the coil for cylinder number two. First, we gotta get that adapter piece out there. Oh, this is so much fun, I bet sitting there watching me. Yippee. Now, when it comes time to pull the cylinder head off, there's a couple options that I won't know what I'm gonna have to do until we get it off and we get it sent off to a machine shop to get checked out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And uh, because if the Basically what's happening, sh shoot me. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, and it's brass. No. Well, it's loose in there. Cut. Okay, so like an idiot, I decided to throw that piece in there and uh, not realizing it was brass and not magnetic. My uh, handy dandy little tool from Metco ain't gonna work on getting it out of there. And these damn pliers are too long. And I can't even see what I'm doing down there. <laughs> oh crap. Oh, why did I do this? It's too long. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Why did I do that? Oh no, crap. <laughs> oh, Landon, you're... <laughs> I grab the inspection camera. Maybe I can jam this thing in there. <laughs> Let's grab this fellow one more time. Oh, 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 thank God, we got it out, okay. Ooh, buddy, that would've been bad. That would've been real bad. Okay, we got it out. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, that was nerve wracking. That's why uh, cylinder number three is not firing. It's got absolutely zero compression. So it means to me that the electrode from the spark plug 
the old one that screwed up. Uh, got somehow sandwiched between the valves and the cylinder head. Which back to the cylinder head, there's several options I can do. Um, if the cylinder head is salvageable, if it's okay, then we can have it just rebuilt and that's fine. It'd probably be about 200, 250 bucks. But uh, if it's not salvageable, a replacement from Summit Racing is about 450, 500 bucks. And that's on top of the about $1,400 it's gonna cost me to have this cylinder head removed. Like I said, I'm capable of doing it, but it's just a matter of, of the time thing, you know what I'm saying? I really don't have the time. It's just life has taken over and I've got so much going on in my personal life that I just don't have the luxury of being able to work on my cars like I wish I could. But I mean, I, I could probably have Jacob do it, but he's nowhere near the experience level that requires this. He's a good kid, he's smart, and I know he wouldn't break anything on purpose, but he's just not at the level that I would wish him to be in order to do this. So let's go ahead and take off cylinder two. Look at the coil pack on that. I may be opening up another can of worms here too. This cylinder's probably as well. Yeah, we'll probably toast. If that's the case, then we'll probably just go ahead and get a whole new head. Might as well throw in all new spark plugs and all new coils while I'm at it. Be nice. Don't... Ah, I hate it when it does that. Where are my pliers? Give me those. Yeah, seeing a little plastic boot comes off, a lot of people say, oh, now you gotta replace that. Nah, done it millions of times. Uh, excuse me? I'm sorry, what? This sucker wasn't even screwed in. Like, what the hell, bro? Turn this inspection camera back on. Let's take a look down inside this hole. And it looks pretty good. Doesn't look like there's an insert or anything. Cylinder looks all right. Bango, love this little guy. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, let's see if I can cheat here. Use this piece. Let's see if it'll let me do that. No, it doesn't look like it's gonna let me do it. Yeah, the threads are different. So yeah, we gotta use this little guy again. We'll think of a way of... <laughs> uh, son of a Yes, I just dropped it in there again. Only this time it's backwards. Take a sip of the rock star, calm down. Well, at least this time I can see where it's at. Ta-da. You know what, I got an idea. Ah, here we go. Get some wheel bearing grease. And we'll just kinda we'll pack the spark plug socket full of it. See, I'll just go ahead and pack that full of grease. And that should hang onto that sucker quite tight. <laughs> Little old redneck trick there. Okay, that sucker's nice and tight. And set up our handy dandy little meter thingy. Get on there, there you go. Now remember, we want between 90 and 120. I don't know if y'all can see that. Can you see it? Maybe I can zoom in on that. Oh crap, I don't know. We'll check it out. Let's see. Right. Turn the GoPro back on. It's only one cylinder. Oh, what the hell? Why did it drop back down? <sighs> That's tight. Okay, maybe I need to read it from the cab. Can I read that from the cab? Oh yeah, I can read that from here. Barely. Oh yeah, it's, it's hitting 120. I don't know why it's bleeding off so quick though. Oh yeah, it's banging 120. I don't know why it's bleeding off. A little weird if you ask me. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe the Schrader valve's in a different spot, but I'm pretty sure cylinder three's dead. Easy on the way out. Yep. All right, we salvaged it. Oh, that could be part of it. This O-ring's trash already. I only used it twice. Go figure. Yippee. 
All right, well. You know what, let me show you guys real quick how this inspection camera works. Cause it's really freaking cool. So anyway, it's got a little camera on the end of this port here and it's got lights and stuff. But we can, right now we can see on the screen there and nothing's going on. But if I pull it out, you can start seeing bits of the engine, you know? But if I go in here, let's turn the light on. Now you can actually start to see what it is I'm looking at. I and mean, that's the spark plug hole right there. You can get that. The threads are looking halfway decent. And then I do believe that's the top of the piston. So, pretty neat little tool I got there. So, I'm happy for that. But, uh, let's see what we got here. Anything else going on? Or should I just put this pig back together? I think I'll just put this pig back together. Well, all right, that's that. I mean, she's dead, Jim. Gonna have to pull that cylinder head off and uh, not something I was really wanting to uh, go down the road of, but it is what it is, I guess. Um, hopefully the cylinder head is salvageable. I mean, that, cause that's gonna be quite expensive, but uh, at least it's drivable though. I mean, I can move it around and it's fine. I can drive it to the shop to get it changed out and fixed up, but uh, yeah, that's it. Poor girl is almost dead in the water. Okay, real quick before I forget, I want to answer a few questions that y'all may be having. When, when I was turning the engine doing the compression test, you could hear that the engine was going, doing a little ring and ring and ring and ring and ring. The reason it's doing that is since there's no compression on cylinder three, it's a lot easier for the engine to turn when it gets to that cylinder's compression cycle. So therefore that created the change in tone on the starter and the engine, which to me is a telltale sign that duh, there is no compression but I just wanted to make absolutely certain that it was cylinder number three and not something else that I'm chasing for no freaking reason. Some of you are probably wondering how I was able to cut the fuel off to the engine without actually doing a whole lot. I simply just removed the fuel pump relay. Um, since I know Fords, I knew exactly which one it was I was looking for. Uh, Cause if you look under the hood of a Ford and you find the fuse box, they're all just numbered. They don't tell you which ones it does. But since I'm, constantly fixing my Fords, I know exactly where it's at. Question number three, why did you forget that brass was not magnetic? Uh, look, I had a temporary lapse of memory, okay? Leave me alone, eat shit. One more quick thing, update on the dart. Uh, Kevin was able to find a replacement wiring harness, uh, completely bone stock out of another car from somewhere on this planet. As you can see, it's got fresh connectors. He's slowly but surely taking stuff apart. I think he's got to the point where, yeah, he's gotten this box out of here. And uh, I think he may be looking for that one too, unless he got it with the kit. I'm not sure, or not the kit, the, uh, the new harness. Um, let's see here. So yeah, he's gonna be working on that thing, little bits by little bits. And uh, maybe one day when he's not, you know, being a punk, we shall come up here and give him a hand with it. But uh, yeah, until then, later date. All right, so that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. I'm sorry about the lack of content lately. It's just, there's been so much going on. I mean, you know, Jacob's working full time. He's also going to school. I'm working nights and my days off are weird days. That's why these videos usually come out on Friday because I've got weekdays off. I, I don't get to have the weekend off, unfortunately. But uh, hopefully soon we'll start pumping out more content as things go along. Um, Till then, just hang tight, bear with us, and we'll just probably do little things here and there. But hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. We'll see you again next time.